Hello! I know I've been away for ages. Where do I start? When I last spoke or put a, put a video up, I was 14 DPO, um, 9 days past the 5 day transfer and I had started bleeding. Um, yeah, my, it, it continued and um, yeah, period came. So, um, yeah, big fat neg negative. Um, the video before, actually, um, I posted up that I got a positive on a one of the internet GP tests, which I did, which was very frustrating because it was an evening urine and there was a line there. I had my sister-in-law over. She saw the line. Zav saw the line. We all saw the line. Like The ones before, they were all like squinting, but you could see it as soon as you looked over. I'm never, I'm never, never, never using using those tests ever again um i'm never going to test and i wouldn't advise anyone to test because it just caused me more stress to test the trigger out to test at any point during the two week wait next time i will be um waiting and testing and i'll be waiting until i see a clear line an obvious line on a first response or a clear blue digital that says pregnant i'm not going to be doing any other testing in between and I advise everyone else not to do that as well so that that was that obviously disappointing um I've since been to see the um clinic because that was my last IVF attempt that was funded by the NHS so you get two in Surrey two fresh attempts and I had my first fresh obviously was a miscarriage eight weeks um my second IVF was the frozen um, the remaining frozen egg from that attempt and that was a chemical pregnancy and that was a proper chemical pregnancy because I literally had a clear blue digital test telling me I was pregnant for one to two weeks for at least a week um, and then it changed just before the test day um, this time it was just the cheap internet test that had a, had a line on it so it was probably an evap line um, and clear blue and first response were all negative so I'm not calling that one a chemical I'm just calling that a dodgy dodgy test and a big fat negative um yeah so unfortunately there weren't any frozen eggs as you know if you've been watching my videos so now we don't have any option but to save to do another um IVF attempt um like I, like I was saying I went to see the um consultant at the clinic IVF clinic and he basically said that he wouldn't feel comfortable for me to be going on to um, do do one right at the moment. He suggests that I have a hysterox hysteroscopy where they can take um, a biopsy of the lining. Um, I know they did that before, but I think that was just maybe, I don't know what it was for. I'm still no none the wiser to what those that test was back in a few years ago, three years, four years ago. Um, like I said before, all I know that is that I don't have any polyps or um, endometriosis or anything like that. But um, he says I should need to have something that can look at the the cells of the, li the lining to see if there's any Im implantation issues. Because he says the quality of your eggs aren't decreasing. Um, the amount of eggs aren't decreasing. The sperm's good. Um, I'm, a res I'm a performer, he calls me. You know, I'm, There's nothing that's to say that it shouldn't be working. So it, we need to go back to basics and he suggests that I do my research and go to get loads of tests done. So, um, as you remember from, it is, I've just checked and it's actually my Vida 15 video, um, which was called um, Hospital Appointment and Some IVF Foods and I'll put the link here. Um, it was basically at about 4 minutes and 25 seconds I was talking about what happened in my... Um, I had a review with the, the hospital, not the clinic, the hospital, to find out what all these tests were back then and the results of my HCG, HSG that I had um, three years ago. And I was disappointed because the lady there, um, she was Asian, so I couldn't really understand her accent, unfortunately. And I was saying that she, you know, she couldn't really tell me what the results for the HSG was, apart from that my tubes were blocked. Um, but I remember saying to you in that video that um, 
I looked down at her file and I saw that it said um, I had an, what I thought said an accurate uterus but I've yet to find out that it actually said um, let's see how it's pronounced hi Zav um, an arcuate uterus and I've go I googled accurate uterus just to see what it meant um, randomly after the failed attempt and um, this came up the um, arcuate uterus so I'm now thinking oh, okay I've looked down and glanced and I thought that it said something that it isn't so I've looked into what that means and it is actually um, kind of an abnormal shape to the uterus um, some things that I've googled say that it it's you know it can cause miscarriage and it can cause um, premature labor because of the fact that it's you know you get the triangular shaped uterus but the arcuate uterus is slightly dipped I don't think it's heart shaped because I think that's a little bit more concave I'm not sure but um so I was sitting up a few days after the cancel uh, the failed attempt um bawling my eyes out about half one in the morning so I was asleep and I was just furious I just thought one why have I got to glance at this paperwork to see that this is what's what's you know the shape of my uterus this is something that I should be told I know because I've moved from how I've moved from different areas basically and during my um kind of fertility treatment I haven't been able to get a full kind of update on um what's happened and you know results of tests and things because I have moved and all the hospitals have kind of had to catch up so I think that's part of the reason why I wasn't told but still um even this Asian lady had it all in front of her and she couldn't tell me and didn't didn't tell me didn't nobody's told me that I've got this um uh, possible complication and um I have read that it can cause miscarriage and it can cause possible implantation issues so I'm now at a point where I'm like peed off because why have I been forwarded why have I been referred to do three two um funded wonderfully funded IVF attempts when there could be possible issues that haven't been raised haven't been flagged up to me that could have been sorted out before I've waste, now wasted funding that you know Zav and I are going to have to struggle and work so hard to even afford to do another just one round let alone you know two or three um so I'm just furious so I basically called the um secretary to the actual consultant the main person not the registrar the person and I was crying down the phone and I just said I'm not having this I'm really annoyed um I feel like I don't know what's my how serious my infertility is and I want to know I want to be in control so um and I explained to her that I'd come to see the um the Asian doctor she told me her name I said yeah that was her and I said that she didn't really know me she didn't know she had to read my file while I was there she didn't have a clue um and I explained that I happened to glance down to see what I thought was an accurate uterus, but I've read, read since that it, you know, there's something called an arcuate uterus, which I think, you know, could have been what I, what I might have seen. And I just explained that I wasn't happy that I'm just completely out of the loop. And if it comes to it, I will appeal to get more funding, and I'll do what it takes because I feel like it's incompetence from their side. Um, and she said, oh, I um, feel, so, you know, she felt really sorry for me. And she said, I should be speaking to the consultant now, not the registrar's. She's the one that's going to know the most. She's going to have everything on file. She's going to know. So um, basically, she, I'd already been given an appointment for the 7th of November or something, which is like a good two months away, to see a registrar, I'm presuming. So she said, let me find out when she's free. But, you know, be warned that it can be quite a wait. So I've... Um, I was waiting on the phone and then she just t turned around and said, oh my God, you're in luck. And I was like, okay. And she said, somebody's cancelled an appointment next week. So, which is this week now, we're at Monday and they've managed to fit me in to see the main consultant at um, Fertility at the hospital, local hospital um, on Wednesday at four o'clock. So I'm going in there guns blazing. <laughs> I'm hoping... That they're, uh, you know, they're gonna, I, they're either gonna say yes, you have this accurate uterus. Um, I will say the clinic weren't aware of it. I will say, you know, I, I'm gonna request that she applies to the 
um, Surrey people that fund the IVF to say she needs, you know, about having another go. And if not, if that's not going to be the case, then at least for her to be putting me forward urgently to have all the tests that I want to be basically you know, a fresh eye from her, from their hospital, because all the other tests were another hospital. So they have new um, evidence on on me. So I have a bit more of an understanding of what's going on, because, you know, any, any kind of information will help the clinic, the IVF clinic to, you know, help us to conceive. So that's on Wednesday. Um, so I'm hoping that either way there'll be some kind of good news <laughs> Because at the moment we're devastated that it's not worked and it's scary, the prospect of having to save money. I know we're very lucky to have had the attempts that we've had. But if my miscarriage at eight, nine or nine weeks could have been prevented because I, you know, for some in some way, uh, maybe I could have you can have surgery on that um, on an arcuate uterus to kind of take away the to reshape the uterus, which you know because when I had my miscarriage they told me that it was very high up in the uterus so it could have been that that caused the miscarriage you know so that's my IVF attempt and a possible baby that I could be holding now that could have been pre prevented you know if I'm just hoping to have answers you can tell how frustrated I am and how frustrated Zav is as well we're, we're both like we just feel like we're completely dejected from we don't have a clue what's going on in our own fertility issues. I just want everything written down, explained. I don't want anything un unturned. So that's what I'm going to be doing on Wednesday. I'm going to go guns blazing. Um, Zav and I, we've got a couple of, well, we've got debts and credit cards that we have decided that we are going to try and pay off first before we start saving for the IVF. Because obviously it will just mount up otherwise all the debts that we're creating so um zav started a new job he's been there two weeks and i start my full-time job in october and together uh, we've worked out a kind of a rough plan that means that our finances the credit cards and things like that most of them will be paid off to a level that is kind of reasonable you know that is manageable but we think that we might be able to fund our ivf next ivf attempt by um April or end of April so that's that um, on another note I am not going to tell you what website I found it on because it's not advisable to do this um, but I went on to a website and I searched for um, IVF drugs unused IVF drugs um, because obviously to have IVF at my clinic it's £3,500 to add for them to leave the embryos to extended blastocysts and things like that, that's another £560. Um, and if you want to have any of your eggs frozen, if you manage to have any eggs frozen, then that's an extra £600. Um, so that's pff, five grand or something in itself. Um, and with the drugs that you um, need, it, they've given me a rough estimate of um, £1,500. So... Um, because basically I need to have four um, vials of menopause a day because they're 75 m ml or mi or I don't know um, per day because my dose is 300 um, that's what I need that's the amount that I need to respond to to get all you know the follicles growing and everything so and it works that that works out at 80 pound a day <laughs> so if it, it, it if you're doing 14 days, up to 14 days of um, stimming, that's like £1,200 just for menopause stims um, alone, let alone all the other things. Um, but Bucerolin is actually a lot cheaper. Um, you can get one of the vials for like £20 and you only use kind of one and a half really. So that's quite manageable. I don't need to worry about that so much. And I'm not worried about that. Um, Cyclogest, the pessaries that you have twice a day during your two-week wait, again, they're about a pound for 14 of them. Um, so again, that's something, you know, that's not too bad. It's a bit manageable. Uh, what else do I need? I need the um, the steroids. Steroids, um you can get quite cheap as well then they're, that's they're, not really the bulk of the expense um it's it's really the the stims so um 
I'm not really counting everything else in a way. But the other th expense is the blood thinners that I need to be on, which are Claxane. Um, I have like two left here, and I've kindly been donated some, um, some which will be from, enough for my next cycle from somebody on my um, that I've known uh, over a year um, from chatting on my Facebook and IVF buddies and things like that. So. Um, that's just <laughs> amazing you know they they cost about five pounds per day so if you're you know two week wait and things it can, it can be costly not as much as the stims but it is going to help um so really i'm i did go on this website i found somebody that was selling unused medication this was due to her um, she was about to do IVF, but she actually fell pregnant naturally. Um, I it's basically like I said, the menopause is like one thousand two hundred pounds for the cycle, and this lady was selling her menopause, which is enough for um, a whole round of IVF and maybe some spares. Um, menopause. She was selling her cyclogest and some other bits and um we got that for 350 pounds so we've saved ourselves like 700 800 pounds on on that so we've put we're putting that aside um so <clears throat> so yeah menopause it was all sealed and everything and luckily the website that i bought it off they don't actually allow people to sell medicine on there um, the lady didn't didn't actually realise at the time, and I didn't realise. Uh, someone flagged flagged it up when I had um, paid for for the medicine, and then somebody said to me, "Oh, you know, be careful because one, you're not supposed to sell um, prescri prescribed medicine on online on this particular site, and um, two, you know, you don't know what's what's in it and stuff." But luckily, I was in contact with this lovely lady. She sent me a card with the medicine to say. Um, good luck on your your next cycle everything was sealed um and in date and everything so um yeah so i've got enough menopause to last me she gave me um an, a sharp spin she's given me um cyclogest i already had i already had some left so she's given me 15 times 30 of these and so that's that um i've got enough um stims um needles for the next go uh what else have i got um some leftover things i haven't got any of these but i need to, i don't i expect they're quite cheap but they're for the bucerolin i don't have any bucerolin left but that's what it looks like but um yeah shouldn't be too hard to get my hands on um <clears throat> i've still got two clear blues still got two first response i've still got all these internet cheapy ones that i won't be using again um so yeah i'm very 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 lucky and like i say i've got two claxane injections left and my kind friend is sending me um the ones that she's got left so really medicine wise i'm okay um thankfully um we just need to save for the 3500 for the IVF itself. I've given myself £200 each month to spend on myself. And that's after all my bills, food, petrol, everything. Um, and then everything that's left like that, I'm just throwing straight into paying off debts and saving for IVF. Um, so really, if we're coming into October now, I'm going to be having at least six or seven month break from doing the IVF, which is pretty scary but um but yeah it's got to be done really so i will i'm sorry about the long video i had a lot to talk about and i will keep you posted on what my um this consultant says to me whether i have any grounds to kind of scratch for another attempt um because there could be hundreds of things they could have done before being referred to IVF, but they never gave me that option. And to be honest, I was a bit naive to it back then, and I was just like, "Oh, okay, you need, I need IVF. Let's go." You know, thinking that it would be just plain sailing. But after three attempts, it's just, you know, 
But anyway, that's my update, and I will um, speak to you all soon. Bye.